हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स सी दिस इज योर फोर्थ लेक्चर ऑफ चैप्टर नंबर फोर मेजर्स ऑफ डिस्पर्सन ओके सी इन अवर लास्ट लेक्चर आई टोल्ड यू दैट वी कंप्लीट अप टू इलेन नंबर टेन एंड I gave you a homework that uh, exercise 4.3 question number one two three that is ungrouped data and discrete group data. We have to find out the mean deviation of that particular two types of data, right? And we also do that here that illustration number ten is for the continuous group data. and here we have to continue with the next illustration that is illustration number 11 i told you that in my group or conference lecture that we, we i am asking you a, a formula okay so i hope you all remember all the formulas now we will move forward to our next illustration that is illustration number 11 okay See, I am reading that particular question first. From the following information of the fortnight sale of two wheelers, two wheelers by the thirty dealers of a city, find the mean deviation of a number of two wheelers sold. See, we have to find out here from the group data mean deviation, and the number of two wheelers is given twelve to sixteen, six seventeen to twenty one. See. it's which type of data inclusive or exclusive that you have to give the answer now number of dealers 2 3 14 that is your frequency from that first of all we have to find out the mean and <clears throat> from that we have to find out the mean deviation okay so no, we are not wasting our time we are just doing our sum number of two wheelers and number of dealers is given here Twenty to sixteen, seventeen to twenty-one, then twenty-two to twenty-six, then twenty-seven to thirty-one, then number of dealers 2 3 14 8 3 14 8 3 and is equal to what first of all That is thirty. Now we have to find out the mean value from that. First of all, this one is a continuous group data, and that's why we have to find out a mean values. What is the mean value of twelve and sixteen? Twelve plus sixteen divided by two. That is what. That is fourteen. So your mean value is fourteen. And see that here the class length. See the class length is equal here twelve then seventeen, seventeen then twenty two, twenty two then twenty seven, and twenty seven then thirty two. So the class length is five. Okay. So here we just have to add. 
to find out the next mid value 5 as a class length here so this is your mid values okay and now see we can find out this one by fi xi as well as this one by the shortcut method see what is the method taken here here the taken uh, method taken is fx method right but we can <coughs> find out this by uh, by the uh, second method that is shortcut method also here I, we are <coughs> go with the books that is fx multiplication of these two see we want first mean see what is the formula for mean deviation sigma f modulus f sorry sigma f modulus x minus x bar upon n this is the formula right but for that we want x bar what is your x bar first for that we have to find out the fx that is multiplication of these two what is the multiplication of these two here 28 57 then 1 1 1 3 3 6 then 2 3 2 and then 102 so here we want the total of these sigma fx is equal to what what is the total of fx see the total is 7 double 5 okay you have to do this with your calci please don't see here please do this sum by yourself because it is very easy and here I am just doing the particular sums from the textbook. Okay, so you have to do this sum by yourself by using your calci and do by yourself. Okay, so first of all, what is your fx? What is your x bar? For that x bar is equal to what? Sigma fx upon n. See here sigma fx is 7 double 5. n is equal to 30. So here 2 point, sorry, 25.1667. So your approximate answer is 25.17. See, now what is your x bar? It is not perfect. It is in the point. It is in the fraction. So here you are confused, sir. It is we can take these yes we have to take these because this is the formula and see here in illustration number 10 x bar is fully integer that is 27 marks and from that x minus x bar and calculation all other calculations are very easy but here the x bar is in fraction that is 25.7 now you are confused that here sir if the answer is in the fraction we can find out the x minus x bar and all other, all other things yes we can find out but here the main thing is that sigma x minus x bar will not be zero because we are taking six as a seven so here x minus x bar is not zero sigma x minus x bar is not zero but we don't need that that's why we have to just find out x minus x bar then modulus x minus x bar and then multiplication with f modulus x minus x bar we have to find out these three columns okay so here first column that is x minus x bar and here x bar is equal to 25.17 okay so here we have to find out the x minus x bar column then modulus x minus x bar column that is we have to convert all negative amount into positive and then the final answer that is multiplication these x minus x bar modulus with f so the last column is f into 
मॉड्यूलस x माइनस एक्स बार सो वी हैव टू प्रिपेयर दिस थ्री कॉलम व्हाट इज योर फर्स्ट कॉलम x माइनस एक्स बार व्हाट इज योर एक्स सी दिस मिड वैल्यूज ऑल दिस मिड वैल्यूज दिस वन इज योर एफ दैट इज फ्रीक्वेंसी दिस वन इज योर एक्स दैट इज योर ऑल द ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड दिस इज द क्लास सी वी नीड कंपल्सरी मिड वैल्यूज ओके सो यूर फोर्टीन माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव पॉइंट सेवेंटीन दैट इज माइनस इलेवन पॉइंट सेवेंटीन देन माइनस सिक्स पॉइंट सेवेंटीन देन ट्वेंटी फोर दैट इज माइनस वन पॉइंट सेवेंटीन देन ट्वेंटी नाइन दैट इज फोर पॉइंट Eight three that is positive four sorry three point eight three three point eight three positive and then last is eight point eight three okay so here the answer is x minus x bar is in fraction all the all the observations that is all observations are in uh, integer but here your x bar is in fraction that's why. x minus x bar all the values of x minus x bar are in fraction but don't be confused by that just multiply these with these and your answer will be here sorry not with this first of all we have to find out modulus that is we have to convert all the negative values into the positive minus 11.17 it is a 11.17 positive then 6.17 then 1.17 then 3.83 and then 8.83 thirty one point Thirty one point seventeen is the total, but we don't need the total of x minus x bar as well as modulus x minus x bar. We don't need that. That's why we are not doing a uh, any total of these or these. Okay, we just multiply with f uh, f with x minus x bar modulus, right? So here the multiplication answer is Eleven point seventeen into two, right? That is twenty two point thirty four. See the answer. Now six point seventeen into three. That is eighteen point fifty four, fifty one. Then. One point seventeen into fourteen. That is sixteen point three eight. Then three point eight three into eight. That is thirty point sixty four. And the last three into eight point eight three. That is. Twenty six point four nine. So your sigma f modulus x minus x bar is equal to make the total first into your calcium. That is one one four point three six. See here what we have to do first. See I am again explaining you here. The twelve to sixteen, seventeen to twenty-one. The group is given. Then the frequency that is number of dealer that is f is given. What is the total of frequency that is n is equal to thirty? Now we have to find out the mid value because this one is the continuous group data. This one is the mid value. Now f x that is multiplication of these two is equal to this. Here the answer is seven double five. Okay, from that we have to find out x bar first. X bar are in integer, not in integer, but in fraction. Here, one time of confusion is there. 
when some students are confused here the answer is wrong or not no it is correct whenever the answer is not in integer that is in fraction you are always you are not uh, you are not wrong sometimes it will be correct okay so here your answer is 25.17 now x minus x bar we have to find out that x minus x bar here we have to write down in the into the bracket x minus x bar that is this minus 25.17 here some amount are in negative and some in positive but we need the modulus form that is we have to convert that into the modulus form that is modulus x minus x bar next column is that and we have to convert that all the negative amount into the positive but positive will be as it is no change and now we have to multiply with the f that is the multiplication here and the last answer final answer what we need for mean deviation is sigma f modulus x minus x bar is equal to 114.36 and now we have to put all the values into the formula what is the formula mean value is equal to sigma f modulus x minus x bar that is 114.36 divided by 30 so what is the answer here see mean here we just have to find out mean deviation not coefficient of mean deviation in illustration number 10 and 11 we just have to find out only mean deviation that is 3.812 wheelers answer is 3.81 your mean deviation is 3.812 wheelers okay so so thus mean deviation of number of two wheelers sold is 3.81 okay so here your illustration number 11 very easy as illustration number 10 so please write down these and you have a homework that you have to complete your exercise 4.3 full okay so here first of all write down this Okay, complete this. Now, see our next topic that is standard deviation. See, up to this we complete first topic that is range, second topic that is quartile deviation and the third topic that is mean deviation, right? Or the all the relative measures of that three also that is coefficient of range, coefficient of quartile deviation as well as coefficient of mean deviation. And now our next topic is standard deviation. See, this topic is very important because it is not useful in this chapter. It will be useful in the next chapter also as well as this topic is also used in 12th standard. So please be alert for by doing this. Please concentrate on the page number 140. See, I am reading that. We have seen that the definition of the mean deviation is based on the absolute values of the deviation of the observations of the data from the mean. See, it is very, see, absolute value that is x minus x bar. It is based on mean, but absolute value of the mean is the main part of this mean deviation, right? From since the algebraic sign of the deviations are ignored mean deviation is less used 
in the advanced study of statistics see here we are ignoring the minus that is negative see the word is that since the algebraic sign that is minor minus or plus of the abbreviations are ignored means deviation is less used in the advanced study of statistics here this one is used in the past right but now in the new study of the statistics we have to see the standard deviation how see these limitations of mean deviation is overcome by an important measures of dispersion known as standard deviation mean deviation has some advantages as well as disadvantages see on the page number 139 advantages and disadvantages of mean deviation is given into that all the uh, limitations as well as the advantages is given we will discuss it in our regular lecture so but here some limitations are there for the mean deviation and it will be overcome by a standard deviation measures of dispersion next measure that is standard deviation instead of taking the absolute value of the deviation of each observation from the mean the square of the deviation is taken here we don't have to take x minus x bar absolute observation absolute value but we have to find out the square of the deviation that is x minus x bar not absolute value not modulus form but we want x minus x bar whole square see here deviation means what x minus x bar but absolute value means what here modulus form that is the absolute value of x minus x bar that is negative all the negative will become a positive but here that is the limitations of the mean deviation that's why to overcome these limitations here in standard deviation we have to find out say x minus x bar but not this we have to find out a square of the deviation that is square of x minus x bar right okay if the sum of the square of the this deviation is divided by the total number of observations we get an important measures of dispersion known as variance see what is the formula for variance see here i am writing that s square that is the variance sigma that is sum of devi square of deviation taken from mean see sum of square of deviation x minus x bar deviation taken from mean divided by total observation that is n we find out the variance right see the formula see the definition of variance if the sum of square of this deviation is divided by the total number of observations we get an important basis of dispersion known as variance if it is denoted by s square it is denoted by s square the positive square root of the variance is called a standard deviation it is denoted by s so the formula for standard deviation is equal to see here square is there and we want to convert that square on the opposite side of is equal to and that's why here all the values are under the root okay so here sigma x minus x bar all square upon n into the square root this is the formula for standard deviation and it is denoted by s or you can say s d also standard deviation or small s is your it is denoted standard deviation is denoted by s okay so here well known statistician part of carl pearson defined the standard deviation as standard deviation is the positive square root of the mean of a square of a deviation measures from the mean what means of that deviation taken from the square sigma n divided by n and the square root of that that is called our standard deviation and the definition in words given by carl pearson a statistician right see after mean 
standard deviation is another very useful measures which gives information about the values of the observations of a population see mean is very important observe, very very important measurement after that the important measurement is standard deviation this one okay note that the standard deviation is an absolute measure of dispersion if the standard deviation is divided by the mean of the data we get its relative measure of dispersion it is called as coefficient of standard deviation relative measure s upon x bar relative standard deviation or you can say coefficient of standard deviation is equal to s upon x bar coefficient of standard deviation okay now the formulas see for ungrouped data formula for mean formula for uh, ungrouped data formula for uh, discrete group data and formula for a uh, continuous group data formula of mean is different so if the formula of mean is different then the formula for standard deviation is also different for these three types of data that means ungrouped data the different formula then discrete group data different formula and then uh, continuous group data different formula and again a second method see in chapter number 3 we already seen that x bar has six methods first ungrouped data direct method then ungrouped data shortcut method then second first and second now third one discrete group data direct method discrete group data shortcut method as well as continuous group data short direct method and continuous group data shortcut method that means mean has six formulas in regular form as well as here we want x minus x bar that is we have to find out the standard deviation that is x we can find out this uh, standard deviation by again six formulas first for the direct method of standard deviation then shortcut method of standard deviation for ungrouped data that is 1 and 2 then standard deviation direct method standard deviation shortcut method for discrete group data that is method number 3 4 and then standard deviation for continuous group data direct method as well as shortcut method that is uh, method number 5 and 6 okay so here we are just seeing first ungrouped data okay formula for ungrouped data see that first we all write all the formulas
standard deviation for the direct method see the formula what is the method of standard deviation s c variance what is the formula for variance s square and what is the formula for standard deviation only the square root of variance that is s square square root is s that is your standard deviation so here for unroot data s is equal to into the square root sigma x minus x bar all square upon n c or the second method we can write here that is equal to sigma x square upon n minus x bar square see we can use these also we can use x minus x bar see whenever the x bar are in fraction we have to use this formula whenever the x bar are integer we have to use this formula please write down in your fair book please note that this then see illustration number 10 x bar are in integer so we have to use this formula because x minus x bar calculation is very easy whenever x bar are in integer but whenever in x, illustration number 11 x bar are in fraction so here we have to use this formula for standard deviation when x bar are in fraction so these are two formulas here we have to take x minus x bar whole square upon n sigma n square root of that and this one is used for the x bar whenever the x bar is integer and these used when the x bar are in fraction okay so this is the formula for the direct method now next one is for the group data discrete group data and the continuous group data sigma f x minus x bar whole square upon n okay so and also here whenever x bar are in integer but whenever x bar are in fraction see the formula sigma fx square upon n minus x bar square please write down all these formulas please this one is the ungroup data as the direct method and this one is also direct method but see the difference between these two we, we have to use this one and this one and again this one see the for the continuous group data and discrete group data the formula for sun deviation is always same sigma f x minus x bar whole square upon n or sigma f x square upon n minus x bar all square here x is given as an observation here class is given we have to find out the, all of the observations by finding out the mid value of that particular class okay so here we are using this formula whenever the continuous group data and we are using this formula whenever the discrete group data but the difference here the formula is same but the difference is x whenever in the discrete group data x is directly given and into the continuous group data x is not directly given we have to find out from that mid values okay so here these are the formulas first of all write down this this is the direct method Then the shortcut method. Here the formula for shortcut method. C 
सिग्मा सिग्मा डी आई स्क्वायर माइनस अपॉन एन माइनस सिग्मा डी आई अपॉन एन ऑल स्क्वायर सी एक्स बार इज इंटीजर वी आर टेकिंग दिस फॉर्मूला वेन एक्स बार इज इंटीजर वी आर टेकिंग दिस फॉर्मूला वेन एक्स बार इज इन फ्रैक्शन बट इट इज अ डायरेक्ट मेथड बट वेन एवर वी आर टेकिंग अ शॉर्टकट मेथड सी all the observations that is x if all the observations are above 100 80 or 100 then we have to use most probably we have to use a shortcut method and it is very easy to calculate see there is no any specification regarding uh, x bar how to find out x bar by direct method or by shortcut method there is no any specification is given into the question but you have to decide that which formula you have to use when you your calculation is will become very easy or simple see if the observations x all the observations are above 80 or 100 then you have to take a shortcut method for simplify your calculation but if all the observations are below 50 or 20 then you have to take this direct method okay so please keep in mind there is no any specifications regarding the direct method or shortcut method you have to just save your time by simplify your question and answer okay so here now the formula for the discrete group data here the change is sigma fd upon n fd square f into sigma f into d square minus Sigma F D upon n all square, where D is equal to what x minus a again D is equal to what x minus a and here the formula Sigma F D square upon n minus Sigma F D upon n all square into C because here we have to take d is equal to x minus a upon c what is your a that is a means assume means what is your c c means not class length c means here also class length but c means we have to take a common amount from all the observations that is also we can say as your c we can use this formula in this also if we i have to take any common amount from all the observations of discrete group data okay so we have to use this as well as this into discrete group data if we are taking d is equal to xi minus a upon c into this okay so please keep in mind this formula is for standard deviation okay so first of all write down all the formulas for the standard deviation 1 2 3 4 5 6 total 6 formulas for the standard deviation as well as these are this formula is used whenever the stand x bar are in fraction so not only 6 we have to remember 9 formulas for the standard deviation and see i don't have to elaborate this because you all know about x bar about d about n about c all these things right so we don't have to elaborate this and we don't have to write what is x bar what is n what is sigma d what is sigma fd and all these things so you just have to write down these all the formulas for the standard deviation okay so first of all i'm giving you your 5 to 10 minutes to write down this please write down this all the formulas
See, please write down all the formulas and all these things into your fair book. See, up to this, see, we can say that illustration, 11 illustration we complete in our illustration book as well as all the formulas we have to write in our illustration book. And see, exercise 4.1, 4.2 and 4.3 all is over please write down all your homework and if you have any doubts then now don't call me you have to see me in our zoom lecture see you have any doubts in exercise 4.1 4.2 and 4.3 you have to tell me in our zoom lecture so please see that all the lectures as well as connect to our zoom lecture also zoom meeting lecture okay so this is your formula write down these all okay so i hope you all write these formulas now See, move forward to our next illustration that is illustration number 12. See, it is an ungrouped data. I am reading that particular question, illustration number 12. The runs scored by a batsman in his last 7 matches are given below. 52, 58, 40, 60, 54, 38 and 48. 6, 7 matches, that's why 7 observations. Find the variance of the runs. See. This is the standard deviation. That's why this is your S. Now, if they ask about the variance, that means here we have to remove all the square roots. That is your answer of variance. So, there is no different formula for variance. And here we just have to remove all the square roots from there, from these to find out the variance okay so here find out the variance see don't panic that here they ask about the variance here the sir sir you are explaining us the formula for standard deviation and here into the question the question is for variance both are same yes both are same here we just have to ignore the square root Find out the variance of the runs of the batsman. Also find out the standard deviation. First of all, we have to find out the square of these. And then find out the square root that is standard deviation. Okay. So I am doing that particular sum on the board. See that. Runs is given. That is your X. Here it is an ungrouped data. That's why frequency is not given. Right? So your question is that is all the observation is 52, 58, 40. Then 60, 54, 38 and 48. 60, 54, 34 and 48. Sorry, 38 and 48. Now, make the total to find out the X bar. We have to find out first of all the total of these. That is sigma X. Do by yourself. In your LC, what is the total? 52 plus 58, that is 110 plus 40, 150, then 60, 100, 210, then 54 plus 38 plus 48, that is 350. So the total is 350. Now we want X bar because we have to find out the variance as well as standard deviation. 
that's why first of all we we need x bar x bar is equal to sigma x upon n what is that 350 upon 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so your x bar is equal to 50 now main column what we need we need x minus x bar as well as x minus x bar all square x minus x bar x bar is equal to what it is your 50 and we want standard deviation as well as variance that's why we have to find out the x minus x bar all square okay so what is the uh, what is that see 52 minus 50 that is 2 58 minus 50 that is 8 40 minus 50 that is minus 10 60 minus 50 that is 10 54 minus 50 that is 4 38 minus 50 that is minus 12 and 48 minus 50 that is minus 2 and always sigma x minus x bar is equal to 0 always right whenever see whenever x bar are integer the x minus x bar is always 0 and that's why we have to take the formula for variance as well as standard deviation first formula that is direct method sigma x minus x bar All square upon n, and for the standard deviation, S D that is small s is equal to square root of sigma x minus x bar all square upon n. These are the formulas for the variance as well as standard deviation. And here we need x minus x bar all square that is two square that is four, eight square sixty four, ten hundred, ten again hundred. 4 square 16, 12 square 1 double 4, and 2 square 4. So sigma x minus x bar all square is equal to what? Is equal to 432. See, make the total. Okay, four hundred and thirty-two is the total. Now we want a variance that is s square. What is the formula for variance? See here, we have to write variance is equal to s square is equal to sigma x minus x bar whole square that is four hundred and thirty-two divided by n that is seven observation here. So what is the answer? 432 divided by 7 61.7143 so your final answer Variance is equal to that is s square is equal to sixty one point seventy one runs square. You have to write that all the unit into square also. Whenever you are finding out the variance that is s square is equal to what s square is equal to here sixty one point approximate sixty one point seventy one runs square. That is your variance and you have to find out standard deviation also that's why the formula for that is square root sigma x minus x bar all square upon n that is the value of these here this value is 61.71 we all know that that's why we just have to find out the square root of these that is your square root is 7.8538 Okay, sorry, five eight, and that's why your S is equal to seven point eight six runs. Your standard deviation, therefore, your standard deviation is equal to seven point eight six runs. Okay, so here very easy. 
टू मार्क्स सम और थ्री मार्क सम इज ओवर प्लीज राइट डाउन दिस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इलेन नंबर ट्वेल्व इज कंप्लीट राइट डाउन दिस okay now see here i complete my lecture so time for homework what is the homework see here i am writing that please write down your homework in your exercise book see in our last lecture 4.3 question exercise 4.3 question number 1 2 3 is over so now today's homework is question number 4 and 5 of exercise 4.3 and here see that exercise 4.4 question number only one question number 1 is your homework so only three sums are in your homework question number 4.3 question number 4 and 5 and exercise 4.4 question number 1 that is by ungrouped data and this question see into this question x bar are in integer that's why we have to take this value and this formula so it is very easy to calculate and it is very easy for you okay so do your homework and ask if you have any difficulties in my zoom lecture and please 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 remember all this formula of chapter number 3 as well as chapter number 4 because it is useful in your test as well as in your next chapters okay here i complete my lecture so thank you class